Welcome to Complexity Made Simple and my name is Paul Allen and before we get into today's uh, fantastic video newsletter what I'd like to talk to you about is all the materials that you can purchase to help to support the channel. We've got these fantastic textbooks that range from the simple statistical process control for small batch production. We've got the seven quality tools for world-class problem solving, which is essentially yellow belt material. Then we move on to design of experiments for 21st century engineers. Every engineer and scientist needs to be able to do design of experiments. And then finally, drink tea and read the paper. The most fantastic green belt handbook you can buy on the market today. Full of practical tips and fantastic physics that'll help you become a world-class engineer and a world-class quality engineer. Of course, you can also click on the link to buy me a coffee and make a donation. That would be fantastic. But at the very least, click on subscribe, click on like the video, because it all helps to support the channel. Many thanks for your help. And now on to today's video. Welcome to the latest video. And in this newsletter, what we're going to talk about is how to simply measure lean waste. Okay, so what we're going to talk about is measuring lean waste. How do you, to be honest, it's really easy. It doesn't take very long in a lot of cases, but people misunderstand how they're going to do this. So remember what you're doing when you're measuring lean waste. You have a service. Start of the service. You have the end of the service. This could be a product. So when a customer places an order is the start to the point where we get delivery at the end. Now this is especially in manufacturing. What's going to happen, of course, is this time is probably going to be three, four weeks at best. The whole time is going to be three, four weeks. Inside that three, four weeks, there's going to be tiny little portions of valuable activity where you're actually transforming the product and value is being added from the customer's point of view. So if you are making these felt tip pens, maybe you start molding some of the plastic casing and the cap and you start making the tips and the, the, the ink inside and things like that. That would be the valuable bit. But of course, what happens most of the time to products inside a manufacturing plant gets delayed it's in a queue it waits or it just and that is the waste that's what we're looking for so you want to be able to you want to be able to to know what three or four weeks what's happening over three or four weeks quite quickly. So the idea of tracking something and trying to measure it, because if you were going to measure all three or four weeks of activity, you'd physically have to spend three or four weeks seeing every second if you're not careful. Well, that's ridiculous. We don't need to go and measure the time. We just need to look at how different departments behave. So let's take a look. It's very simple. The first step, of course, is going to be sales orders. Yes, uh, so an order's placed and the sales department piece of information to the computer. So let's say somebody sends an email. They've got to enter it onto our system and then the system goes bang and then the demand is on the system and stuff starts getting made or getting ordered. Well, that sales process, maybe it cycles 
once a day. So if you say, well, what I do is I, I wait until I've got a certain amount of emails and then at one o'clock every afternoon, I start processing all those uh, orders into the system and I cycle the process once a day. So how long's the queue gonna be? Well, it's very simple, isn't it? If you, if you send an order at different times of the day and you don't know that this is cycling once a day, but if you send orders in at different times of the day, if you're lucky and you send it just before we start processing, maybe the queue is one minute long. But let's say you're unlucky and you just miss the processing. So you're one minute late well, now you're going to wait eight hours until that order gets processed. So the queue that you enter, and by luck, you could be anywhere on that queue, is between one minute and eight hours long. So on average, how long's the queue? Four hours. It was that easy. It's that easy to... Uh, to sort out. You just look at how each department behaves. Now, okay, let's say this goes to the molding department. So now someone's ordered these and it goes to the molding department for us to make the plastic pieces. It's the same thing. You just ask the question, how often do you put a plan into the molding department? And somebody says, well, oh, for molding, the plan here I make a brand new plan every week. Well, now it's the same situation, isn't it? If I, if I send the order the minute before the plan gets created, then maybe I'm in a particular place in the queue. But if I just miss this planning cycle, of course, I've got to wait a week before it goes onto the plan. And then you've got to ask the question, and how long typically is the plan? So what we would typically say is, well, it's got to be half a week on average, because luck demands that that's what's gonna happen. You could be lucky and be dealt with straight away. You could be lucky and be at the unlucky and be at the back of the queue. So the average wait time will be half a week. And then you say, and how big's the plan? They say, oh, well, I plan the next two weeks. So if we've just arrived into the molding department schedule, where will we be? We'll be on the bottom of a two week schedule. So it's half a week for the process of planning and split that in half again. On average, you'll be one week in the work to list, the to-do list in the molding shop. How long is the delay? A week and a half. Now, I, I didn't need I didn't need a stopwatch or anything for that. Um, you just have to look at the cycles and the way that business works. How long do you create a work to list for? How often do you run that cycle? Do you do it, do it every day? Do you do it every week? If you do it every day, how big's the plan that you create? How long's the list? And once you go, well, on average, the list is five days long. Well, therefore, you're gonna wait by luck two and a half days on average. That's what the lead time's gonna be. You could be lucky and be the first job on the list. You could be unlucky and be the last job on the list. But by the law of averages, two and a half days is the queue. So you can quickly get all of this information. This stuff here, about how long does it take to make the item. You know, if I stick a tool in a, pre in a molding machine and I ask it to make 2000 black molded parts for this pen, how long is that gonna take? I mean, 2000 bits, it's probably gonna be multi-cavity. It's probably gonna take me, I don't know, a couple of hours. It's gonna take me a couple of hours. This is gonna be minor time compared to these things. 
These, these weights, these cues, are typically weeks in length. This thing, you know, I could, I could halve this. I mean, if I halved that, that'd be a brilliant thing to do, but would it make a dent in this cue? Hardly at all, no, it wouldn't. Because the cue is created by the way you work. It isn't created by that task just in and of itself. And so that's how you quantify lean waste. It, it's very easy. And of course, if you walk from department to department to department, you can get the, 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 a sense of what's happening in that three or four week lead time within a couple of days. But of course, if you try and measure it, well, to measure it, I've got to, I've got to track. I've got to track all the three to four weeks. I physically got to see the time pass for the clock to tick. That's not how you go and find lean waste. You find lean waste by just looking at the way the department behaves. And of course, it is the behavior that drives all the waste into the system. And then if you behave in a particular way, and of course your MRP system is, is a model of that behavior, and what the MRP system will force you to do is follow a fixed model, because the numbers in the MRP are fixed. So when you tell it that there's a lead time of a certain amount, it just fixes all those into the calculation. Um, the behavior that you've designed into the system is what makes this lead time three to four weeks. It's not really about being inefficient. It's not really about people wasting time in that sense. It's about the fact that time gets wasted because everybody's order sits in a queue and it's the queuing time we want. And that's really easy to go and find. By the way, it's not really easy to go and get rid of it. It's hard work. You've got to think clearly. You've got to think lean to be able to get rid of lean waste. Reducing cues is the, is the key to making money with lean thinking. But of course, in order to reduce the cues, you have gotta measure the cues first, and lots of the cues relate to your behavior. They don't relate to ticking time. So go measure your lean waste today. You should be able to get this information within a couple of days. Once you've got it there in a, on a piece of paper, decide how to get rid of the stuff and make a bucket load of cash. People that get rid of these queues have got smaller factories, faster flowing materials, better cash flow, less warehousing space, more productive space. Everything they do makes more money. Guys, that's what we want you to do. Go and find your lean waste now.